Hello, this is the summary documentary of the two most important stars that rap and hip hop has given to Pakibo, two of the most important rappers of all time separately. This is from Mika King, News, Rap, Trap and Pop. This time I am going to delve into the relationship that they had a beautiful friendship that became the greatest rivalry in the history of iBop. Rivalry that apparently caused the death of both, whose lives were taken in suspiciously very similar ways. Here we will see everything behind it, without anything else to add. Let's get started. We have here our two main characters, Tupac in Notorious, Big or Biggie. The first was born on June 16, 1971 in New York, United States. He loved reading and writing poems from a young age and went to study at the Baltimore School of the Arts, where, among other things, he learned acting and ballet as a rapper. His lyrics were about street life, protest and partying. On the other hand, Vicky was also born in New York, but one year old. Then, on May 21, 1972, he was writing songs since elementary school, and at age 12 he started selling drugs. At 17, he left school to continue in that business. In his rap songs, he portrayed some of his experiences in a dark tone. Logan Star Rap and Nightlife, Thug Life as a Revolutionary and Social Political Movement. These two characters above all had the street and rap in common, and so as not to beat around the bush, let's go to the moment they met, one day in 1993. Tupac already had success, money and respect in the rap world since 1991 when he released his first album, Tupacalypse Now. He had many admirers, not to Rias Big. It wasn't yet apparent that Vicky had been with the same pair of Timberlandes for a while while Tupac was staying at the bowl. Pasturia bought Rolex watches if she went out with Madonna. Those were statements from Aya and Amen, Tupac's colleague who lived at that time. The occasion is that Vicky wanted to meet Tupac and Just. They were both in Los Angeles. So he asked a friend who they had in common a drug dealer, a seller of illegal substances, to introduce him to him. Tupac took this very well, so much so that he invited Biggie and his friends to a party at his house, where he made them steaks, bought them some of his weed and to play, pulled unloaded guns out of a bag. Thank goodness they fell pretty well. There was chemistry between them and a friendship was generated. It is worth mentioning that since Tupac was already famous, Biggie wanted to learn from him and Tupac would give him some advice. One day Biggie said to him, how about you become my manager? But Tupac turned down the offer. However, he did support him in other ways. For example, he included him as a backing vocalist at his concerts and all this paid off. Since in 1994, Nauta Urias Big published his Die to the album, which turned out to be a sales success and jumped to the big leagues and everything is very nice here, but on November 30th, 1994, things changed unexpectedly. This day Tupac had to record a song with Lil Seen, Vicky's friend at Quad Music Studio, so he approached the building. Where at the entrance from one floor above Milsis, Vicky's cousin, greeted him, who commented that right upstairs he was in Autorias and Pafta and recording some things. So Tupac felt pretty comfortable. He entered the place and suddenly two men, some sources say three military dresses shot him. I got shot five times in between and some guys were following me and they shot me. Tupac fell to the ground and had no better idea than to play dead. They stole the things he had, jewelry, money, and then the criminals left with some of the strength he had left. The rapper took the elevator up and met Biggie, Poof, Daddy. The latter is the director of Bad Boy from Cards, the record label Biggie worked for. Both according to Tupac did not look at him with empathy and a desire to help, but rather with surprise that he was still alive. This disconcerted Tupac, who has let it be known that since that day I suspect that in Autorias Vigi Papradi they had to see or at least previously knew about the shooting that they did to him, which fortunately was not fatal. Anyway, obviously he had to go to the hospital where they started treating him, but before he was completely well, the next day he went to a trial, attended bandaged and in a wheelchair. There he 
was sentenced for sexual abuse of a fan between one and a half years and four and a half years in prison. While in jail, the rapper listened to a new notorious big song called Jucidia in Spanish, Who Shot You? And he felt that Biggie was making fun of the attack they made on him, although in the song Notorious Big directly talks about that, but the title is very suggestive anyway. Puff Daddy denied that the Viggy theme was about the shooting at Tupac, and it has even been mentioned that it was recorded before that event, but Tupac doesn't believe that and took it very personally. In parallel, Sub Knight, a character with a lot of gangster fame, director of Drew's record company, began to visit Tupac in prison to strengthen ties, since he wanted to work with him. According to journalist Ben Noah Staff in Vice magazine, in these meetings, Tupac told Sue Naive the problems he had with Vigi and Pavdai, and Sue to show Tupac that he was completely on his side and against the others. The thing is that on August 3rd, 1995, at the Seuss Awards he gave some words that left a mark openly and directly, although very clear he criticized Pavdai who was also there as well. With his statement he strengthened a rivalry that had been brewing between the East Coast and the West Coast of the United States. In the world of rap, Pavday represented the East where the awards were being given at that time in New York and he joined the opposite side the following month in September, after negotiations. Finally, Tupac and Sube Knight signed a contract in which mainly Sube Knight undertook to pay $1,400,000 which was the deposit for your pack so that it could go free and your pack, for its part, would have to make three albums for death row. That's how Tupac got out of jail the same month. September 95, Sio and Puff Daddy meet at a club. In Atlanta, where a confrontation is set up between their sides, the Vlads and the Cribs, respectively, two very dangerous gangs and great enemies of each other. Here I leave you a picture that I made so that you can see the east and west sides more clearly. The point is that in that role at the club there was a missing Jack Robles, a classmate of Sunite, who was killed by a bullet from the opposite side. Things get more murky in December 95, in the context of a Christmas party. Agents allege that an associate of Pub Day was beaten by Segar Knight, Tupac. Hear more people from death row, apparently looking for information about the residence of Pavadi and his family. But the conflict was not only in the streets, but was projected in music, for example. In 96 Tupac released the music video for two of America's Monstra Anti, where he portrays Biggie Puff Daddy using actors as silly and hypocritical characters who tried to finish him off, but that his plan didn't work out well and then came what for many is the most disrespectful song in history. For many also the strongest song that has ever existed Hide Map, a song that made everything explode. Here Tupac is really angry and out of his tongue, threatening to kill Ana Autorias 5 and Pada and blaming them for the shooting they did to him at Quad Studios. He also expresses that he had intimate relationships with Vigi's wife, Faye Evans, with whom he has a song strong, very strong statement, and also this is with a sample, that is, with sounds of a song by Vicky with her friends get money. So your Paco humiliated Viggy with his own music. Meanwhile, a member of the Crips stole a precious death row Icar's medallion. Supposedly, have to be offered around $5,000 to whoever does that feat, since this medallion had a lot of meaning to the people of death row. And shortly after on September 7, 1996, the fateful night arrived. Tupac y Thium Knight asistieron a una pelea entre Mike Tyson y Bruce Eldan en el Hotel Casino MGM Grande Las Vegas, y terminando el duelo donde ha ido mucha gente. Tupac is told, hey, look, there's the creep who stole the medallion from Detroit and at that moment Tupac didn't think much of it and went along with Subnati more people from Detroit towards that person, Orlando Anderson and they beat him up that was caught on the security cameras a little later. Tupac was heading in a car that drove an ITA towards Club 662, where he had a performance that same night, when suddenly a red light appears, 
the car stops and some girls from the left in another car engage in a flirtatious conversation with the rapper, while on the right appears a white Cadillac from which they shoot numerous times at Tupac. The Cadillac escaped, they took Tupac to the hospital and this time, after six days of trying to save him, he couldn't. Tupac died on September 13, 1996. Four were the most serious shots and no one officially knew who shot him, which is especially striking since this crime was committed in the middle of Las Vegas, where there are many people and it turns out that Pula, a friend of Tupac, was the only person who said he saw who shot him, since he was in a car behind the rapper. Two months later he was murdered before the police took his official testimony, since at the time of the events they said it would be done later. Overall in this investigation it seems that the police did not do their best to solve the case. The truth is that after this event, the gang war became more brutal than ever, and on March 9, 1997, Biggie was in a car leaving a party in front of him in another car. Agadi was behind security when suddenly the traffic light turns red from the sidewalk. On the left some girls talk to him and on the right a black impala appears from which multiple bullets are fired towards Oturi SB, who that same night in the hospital died only six months after Tupac did it and as he had said, in an incredibly similar way. In this case, the criminal car also escaped and it is not known until now who pulled the trigger. The police only managed to make this drawing of the murderer's face, according to testimonies from some witnesses, but there are many theories about both cases. The main maintains that VG Pavadi, fearing for their own lives when threatened by Tupac, orchestrated his murder and in revenge, Sinai ordered VG's life taken. Indeed. Keith Lee is Orlando Anderson's uncle, the guy Tupac hit the night he was shot. He says that Fire Daddy hired him for $1,000 to shoot Tupac and Siok Knight, but at the time of the crime he, who was in a car with his nephew, did not have a good angle to shoot. However, his nephew Orlando did, and that is why he took the gun and ended Tupac's life however. This version has not been officially confirmed by the authorities and there are others that also give a lot to think about. On the other hand, the agent Era Sal Paul had as the main suspect in Vigi's death Mir Mohammed, who seemed to have a connection to a corrupt police officer who seemed to have a connection to Subnight and also resembled the criminal's drawing. Later, a former FBI agent Phil Carson stated that Mir Mohammed, who shot Vigi, this went viral recently, but it's still a testimony from a person who no longer works at the FBI. Officially the authorities have not confirmed that version as true. There are also other theories that give food for thought, such as that of the people, Grace Kitting, who was in charge of the case and said that Amir Muhammad did not fit the profile of the criminal he is looking for, but that the one who committed the crime very possibly is Poochie Faust who, according to a former partner of Sir Knight, was hired by that to murder Autorias Beige. But again in the absence of more compelling evidence, this is just a theory and it is outrageous to know that the truth is most likely never to be known, although I hope it will at some point. If you want to know more theories about both cases to delve deeper into the matter, I am going to leave you two videos that I have made, one about Tupac, and another about Biggie, especially the theories. I leave them here in the description of this video, and finally, something curious is that Vigi lost his life a few days before the release of his next album Life of Tardid, where the song Long Kiss Goodnight appears, in which he apparently attacks Tupac after his death. That's extremely crude. He doesn't mention Tupac directly, but he does reference his male now we cry later tattoos and now he cries later while rapping things like try to kill me. Look what you made me do, your brain exploded, bullets hit your chest, your spine, I heard you died from contact, you got caught four times. This coincides precisely with the four shots that were explosive for your pack. And years later Nilsis declared that in fact, this song was for your pack and that there was even a rawer version before it was not published. A fact that you know.
that this fight continues, even seems after death. But this entire conflict must also be said to have served to make the rap scene in the United States reflect on the issue of violence. It should be noted that it does not lead to anything constructive and since then the relationship between the East Coast and the West Coast has improved a lot. So this story teaches us that if you are a rapper and you see a red light, you don't move any further or you don't. That we must learn from the mistakes of the past so as not to repeat them again. And of course you have to choose your two friends well. Rest in peace and Vicky and let the culprits come to life. This is from Mika King News, Rap, Trap and Pop. Subscribe. Thank you.